Hey everybody, Arnaldo Offerman again, showing you the DMX Operator 384. If you not seen, if you're not seeing the video on how I mapped this guy to work with Grand VJ, watch that first. Now, now that you've seen that video, let's talk about dual mapping this. Now, here's what I mean. Right now, I have these guys going to individual scenes. Pretty easy to do. I can select one here. There's that. Okay, so there's some really cool stuff I can do right off the bat. But I wanted to show you this MIDI button right here, and this is channel one. Basically, all these here, they're different notes, but it says channel one, which is mapped to Grand VJ. If I go to my channel two, it's not going to do anything at all. The same thing as is working, it's not going to work because it's a different channel. Now, that's good because I'm going to go ahead and map it to my DMX software. Now, in this case, I'm using my DMX 2.0. Again, just to show you here, I'm going to go here. I'm going to select different scenes and nothing happens, okay? So now I'm going to go into my channel 2. And what I did is, buttons 1 through 12 are mapped to control slow scenes. Just, you know, different random stuff that I did. Now my DMX does not support two-way MIDI, so even if I get this thing to work on two-way MIDI, your button's still going to be completely lit up. So I just double-click. I've just gotten in the habit of really doing that. Right, which I haven't mapped that one yet, sorry. But again, there's some basic slow scenes. Now when I go to my page two, that now controls some medium scenes. Whoops, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on that particular medium scene. I'm gonna go back to page one. And what I did is, my DMX has what we call different priority modes. There's auto, which is what you always have it on. Latest takes priority and highest. We're going to choose LTP, latest takes priority. And basically that means that the program no longer controls those faders, but I can control these with my DMX operator. So now that means I can dim my, uh, in this is my uh, T-PAR, my inno pocket spots, and my, or excuse me, the roll and the two pocket spots. So if I want to dim the roll, I can do that. If I want to dim my T-PAR and the roll out of that scene that I made and just have pocket spots, I can have that good to go. I went ahead and also mapped to control colors. So I'm going to go into my channel, Bank 2, and this will control the colors, the preset colors for the T-PAR, the, the roll, and the two spots. But you'll see it doesn't do anything. That's because they're still set on auto. So I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to select my LTP for here, latest takes priority for my T-PAR, my latest takes priority for the gobos and colors of the NO roll, and latest takes priority for the color or the colors of the NO pocket spots right there. So now watch what happens. The scene may already, you know, uh, it's got the movements and all that you can see there, but now I can control the colors of just the pocket spots. Or now I can control the color of the roll. Or now I can select the preset colors on the T-PAR without affecting Grand VJ. Now how you choose to do this is completely up to you. That means that now I can go into channel three and map my laser software with it or whatever other DJ software. If you wanna use it to control, let's say, um, you know, you have, uh, the, uh, what's it called? Videos playing on your DJ system or whatever, right? Or music, you can use that to control different parts of your DJ software if you chose to do that. Uh, but I have a different board for mine. But again, the possibilities are infinite because you have 16 pages. So, okay, technically you have 16 pages of possibilities, but you get my point. So again, that is using the DMX Operator 384 to control Arkea's Grand VJ and not my email and my DMX 2.0. Thanks for watching and God bless.